Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Christopher Whitaker. I'm one of the program managers here at Code for America, uh, helping to run our volunteer network. Um, we're very excited to have Zach Swartz over at the U.S. Census. Zach helps run the Census's trust and safety team. As you uh, all should know by now, the Census is kicking off. It occurs uh, every 10 years and is responsible for uh, not only setting up the apportionment in Congress, but also how Congress divides up federal funding. So it is extremely important that people fill out the census, but as we've seen with other um, things the public government has done from natural disasters to elections, there's a lot of misinformation out there. There's been a lot of disinformation. And so we're very excited to welcome the census's trust and safety team to speak a little bit about uh, not only what the census is doing to combat misinformation, but what uh, the public can do to uh, help uh, join the fight as well. Uh, Zach, take it away. Awesome. Uh, Chris, I just want to confirm you can hear me okay, right? Perfect. Awesome. Well, I'm really excited uh, to be here along with a couple members of my team uh, to talk to you all about code for, uh, about the Census Bureau Trust and Safety Team and, and certainly the role that it will play in the upcoming 2020 Census, which, if you can believe it, self-response, our internet uh, self-response option, as well as our call centers and uh, questionnaires will be mailed out here in just a few weeks. So really excited. It's a really busy time at the Bureau, so we're thrilled that we could have an 8 p.m. meeting here on the East Coast. Uh, so that we could uh, make sure we de devote as much time uh, certainly to this and answering questions and, and jumping through things. So really excited. Let's go ahead and swing to our next slide and we'll go ahead and get started. So I think when speaking to you all, you probably know most of what I'll say here on this slide about the rise of the digital age. I can't tell you how much has truly changed since the last census. And sometimes it's interesting talking with other members here at the Bureau uh, and those who lived uh, and were certainly a part of a lot of other uh, censuses here over the last you know, couple decades and understanding how they communicated to the general public about the census. Things have really changed. And you know, in a lot of great ways, it's made it easier to directly reach the American public. Uh, but there's certainly a lot of bad, and, and, and as Chris alluded to in the beginning, that the spread of mis- and disinformation is a real concern for the Census Bureau and our goal to get a complete and accurate count. And we are looking for any and all's help in uh, certainly doing a lot of self-reporting about mis- and disinformation, but even more importantly, being an advocate, talking about the importance of census like Chris did earlier. I mean, this is really your representation for the next 10 elections, let alone trillions of dollars over the next decade in federal funding for local schools, community uh, centers, roads, everything you can imagine. And it's so important that we get this complete and accurate count and doing it means combating mis- and disinformation about the census out there. Um, so let's swing on to, to our next slide and we'll dive in a little bit more into this. Certainly, reputational threats are a key component around mis- and disinformation. We are truly concerned that if we, the Bureau, don't have a strong reputation in communities, and what does that mean? A reputation that we will keep your data secure, that your data will only be used for statistical purposes, that your data is safe from technical breaches, and that there aren't going to be hacks or other things that will provide uh, sensitive information or what we call Title 13 information that you all provide the Bureau out there. And there's a lot of technical resources we'll dive into certainly in this presentation. Uh, in our messaging, we want to make sure that the messaging around the Census Bureau is accurate and that it's correct so that we can be the authoritative source of information about what the Census uses your information for, uh, how we use your information, and again, why it's so critical to respond. And then, you know, the social technical uh, risk that exists, there's a lot of concern that there might be manipulation, there might be changes that would maybe deter uh, resonance of the U.S. from responding. And those are things that we're all interested in combating uh, when it comes to protecting the reputation of the Census Bureau. We can jump to our next. For those who may not be fully uh, aware, I just always like to make sure we're clear. So misinformation is the inadvertent spread of inaccurate information, where certainly disinformation is deliberate, is uh, false information being deliberately or covertly spread. And both of these are real 
factors that at play when it comes to the 2020 census. And we've seen instances where we want to, where we've had misinformation out there that has truly impacted our operations, not necessarily in a way that it stops anything, but in a way that's concerning. And what we've done, which we're going to dive into, was work hard to establish this team to address those exact cases so that we knew how and when, certainly during our self-response operation here shortly, we can combat it in real time. So we'll talk through some of those here in a second. But how we do it is something that I really want to hit on with this group in particular. The Census Bureau's Trust and Safety Team has 24 by 7 coverage. We are monitoring in the news and scanning news clips, traditional media of all sources to make sure that we've captured where the census is being discussed. We want to know and make sure that we have accurate information in traditional media. There's even an instance today earlier where we had inaccurate information being displayed in a uh, affiliate of a major network. I mean, those are truly concerning things that unfortunately was not, it was inadvertent in it and it was not intentionally done, but it was inaccurate to the point that it could have caused some viewers to be turned off about the census and what was being displayed. So our ability to quickly detect those, monitor them, and actually correct them are things that we'll, we'll dive into here. One of the other kind of unique areas for us, specifically with this census, is our on the ground, I call them our on the ground intelligence. It's the community, it's our community partners. It could be your local mom and pop grocery store down the street. It could be your local Safeway or UPS store. There's a bunch of over 300,000 at this point, local partners that the Bureau is engaging with to get the word out about census. But these community partners, while helping spread the good about the census and why it's important to complete, they're also helping to be our eyes and ears to make sure that accurate information is out there in their local communities at a hyper local level. And those are just critical to us. There's also groups that are deeply involved in their WeChat and their WhatsApp and other private, excuse me, other private areas uh, that are providing us information that we may not be able to scan via a public social media post. So understanding that there may be rumors in the Chinese American community on WeChat or in a, you know, a different demographic population on WhatsApp, we're able to understand what the, what's happening there and help target those communities with accurate and authoritative content. Certainly on the web, we have a dedicated team at the Bureau focusing solely on monitoring our public social media platforms like Twitter, Facebook, uh, YouTube, and many others, so that we have an understanding what the conversations are happening what are people talking about when it comes to the census and addressing those quickly uh, and accurately. And we'll dive into a little bit more of how we do that, certainly with big tech. We have our very traditional over the, over the phone uh, call centers. We are gonna have people calling us uh, quite a bit to take the census. In addition to that, we also have a headquarters call center that uh, will take on information and be a source for people to report mis and disinformation. And it may sound simple, but one of the most effective tools that the Bureau has set up as part of the trust and safety team is our rumors at census.gov email. If you think about the see something, say something campaign, this is more or less how we have touched the, touched the public in a way for them to directly report cases of mis and disinformation to us. And it's been a wild success in my mind. To date, we've had dozens, hundreds of emails come into us to let us know about things that are happening at a hyper local level. And this again is a great way for us to quickly address what's happening in the community, how we can get our partners at the hyper local level engaged and make sure that we have authoritative content put out to address those rumors. And we'll talk a little bit more, but rumors in census.gov is one of the best ways that we're hoping the community here for Code for America can reach us when they see something in their communities that's concerning about the census. Um, Let's jump a little bit here, the trust and safety team overall. One of our pillars that we start with is certainly prevention. And we've done a lot of work to understand how we can best prevent the spread of mis- and disinformation. From there, we look at our detecting and analyzing threats. When we do see information, we're looking across all of our continuous monitoring channels. We're looking at trend analysis, threat analysis to understand what population could this be targeting? Is there a specific demographic or geographic population that this mis- and disinformation is uh, possibly influencing to not respond to the census or to spread inaccurate information about the census? 
other things we do, we really want to make sure we're creating a safe environment so that the, Amer that the American public, the residents of this nation, feel comfortable in responding uh, to the census. And again, that's part of our partner engagement. That's mitigating threats that we're seeing online and certainly flagging and reporting those threats as we see them to the big tech companies. And that's something we encourage certainly the the, the public to do, but luckily the Bureau has been given back end access with a lot of these platforms to actually do that on our own and make sure that we can quickly address to a human being any concerns that we have around uh, mis and disinformation on the large platforms. And certainly providing customer service. We want to be able to provide those proactive messages that resonate in your community. We've partnered with a lot of great multicultural firms to make sure that when we're sharing content, it actually is culturally, not only culturally sensitive and makes sense in there, that way, but it's something that would resonate and something that that demographic population or that geographic area would want to spread. It's a message that really sits with those uh, community members. So let's jump to our next slide here. I talked a lot about some of our big tech and, and without them, we would be at a real disadvantage when it comes to the spread and combating mis and disinformation. We've done a lot of proactive outreach. As you can see, this is just a sample of some of the big tech that we're working with to make sure that their platforms are free as best as possible of the mis and disinformation around the census. So something that we're very aware of, Sorry, Sam, seeing something here back here. Um, one of the other, I mentioned a little bit about prevention. When it comes to prevention, we've worked hard with our terms of service team to address how census specific interference policies can be implemented across the board at big tech. And there's been some really great public announcements from Facebook, from Google, Pinterest, Nextdoor, and others about the work that they're doing uh, to make sure their platforms are combating mis and disinformation. And this, way, and this varies in exactly how they do it. Some like Nextdoor are, are providing us the ability to scan, that they actually go in and scan their platform looking for specific rumors. Others like Facebook and Google are giving us the tools that we talked about earlier to actually address and report directly to the trust and safety teams at their companies, uh, areas of concern for us that they can address. I can't emphasize enough, and those who are in you know, big tech know how important it is to make sure that your terms of service are accurate and actually have census specific policies. Because just applying election policy or just applying existing policies without actually calling out census can really put us at a disadvantage when you're talking about the large number of conversations that are occurring around census. I mentioned the flagging and reporting piece as well. Again, it's, it's truly critical that it's not the same old queue of millions of reports that go into these companies. We wanna make sure because of the importance of the census that our information, our reports are quickly and accurately being reviewed by the trust and safety teams of these, of these companies. So that in and of itself is a huge win for the Bureau. Uh, and again, being really the first in government trust and safety team, we're, we're hoping that we're laying a path for other critical government programs to have this kind of access and this kind of ability to leverage our big tech out there uh, to fight mis and disinformation. So one of the other areas that we're really working on, and we certainly wanna add Code for America here, is expanding our partnership network. We cannot do this alone, and we can't certainly do this just with our big tech partners. Consumer advocate organizations like AARP, the Better Business Bureau, they have the existing relationships to address mis and disinformation, frauds, scams, and many other things that they do across the board every day of the week. Uh, and those are programs that we're also taking advantage of so that as information is reported to them about the census, they're able to provide us accurate uh, data on that so we can address that and vice versa. We're able to let them know as we have in the past, for an example with AARP, or we're concerned that a rumor uh, or the spread of some inaccurate information out there is, a, is affecting the communities in which they serve. So they're a critical piece to our, our overall success in, in combating. Civil society organizations, again, those that work at the hyper-local level, directly engaged with our hard-to-count populations, those that tend to be tougher to get to self-respond. They play a critical role in making sure that access uh, to information about the census is available and in language and, and many other things. So we're very grateful to the civil society organizations for the work that they're playing here. 
And our government agent, government agencies, you know, like the Federal Trade Commission and, and others, uh, the FCC, that, that play a role in the information and, again, have existing reporting processes for frauds and scams and others, we're very closely tied to them in making sure that, again, we have that information sharing, that if people are calling that government agency, we're understanding uh, that report and vice versa uh, when we feel that they need to be involved in specific uh, mis and disinformation. They're quickly engaged to help us in that fight. Okay, let's swing to our, our last slide. So really engaging the public. One of the best places, as you can imagine, is the 2020census.gov website. We're very proud of this campaign site and the work that goes into updating it on a daily basis with, again, actual content and authoritative content. It's got a great page in there, 2020census.gov slash rumors, uh, that actually goes into how we are using the trust and safety team to dispel rumors without actually trying to per uh, perpetuate them. We have a very well-crafted page that lays out some of the rumors that we've seen to date. That page is also heavily used by our third-party fact checkers. Uh, that we rely on heavily with some of our big tech to make sure that they're writing fact check articles about inaccurate information that we're seeing online. I talked a little bit about the importance of the rumors at census.gov email. We're critically pushing that, making sure everyone has that as a see something, say something uh, when you identify mis or disinformation happening. Certainly calling our customer service hotline. And then we have a whole social customer care team that's on a variety of the uh, big platforms uh, and available for folks to reach out to. And access and updating the frequently asked questions online is another great place that you'll find a lot of authoritative content and certainly reporting it directly to the platforms as a tool uh, that is a great way to hopefully speed up the process when you do see information, inaccurate information about the census. And like I said, we do publish update information on the rumors page and others uh, quite a bit. So definitely feel free to take a look and, and uh, as you're out, you'll, you'll see a lot of great information there. So to our next slide here. Perfect. So I know that was a lot of information that I covered here uh, fairly quickly, but hopefully that was uh, super interesting and, and understanding a little bit about what the trust and safety team does. I can't stress enough, especially for the Code for America audience, that the role you all have in the communities that you work in, in the occupations you may have during the day, other places, we, the Bureau, can, we, we need you as eyes and ears to help us understand when you're seeing things out there. Uh, we're really asking you to help partner with us in reporting information. We will certainly be working with Chris uh, and leveraging the resources of Code for America to help us in our endeavor to fight mis and disinformation. And I wanna stress also, as I told Chris uh, last week, that I hope you all will be a part of the Census Bureau beyond the 2020 Census. The Bureau does thousands of surveys, you know, from the American Community Survey to demographic surveys and economic surveys. We really are providing critical information across uh, the US to, uh, to, to make sure data is available. And mis and disinformation doesn't just occur about the 2020 census. And so eventually working with Code for America and how to combat that with other surveys is something we're really looking forward to and, and wanna preemptively say thank you for any support you all provide in that area. Uh, so Chris, I'll turn it back to you. Wonderful. Um, so now we wanna open it up for questions. Um, I already see we have one. Um, will you open up the, the rumors data so we, yeah, so is that, and if the uh, person who asked that question could clarify um, over the, the chat, are they talking about the rumors data, like post census, like what are the rumors that we all saw or um, what, I'm not quite sure if there's further information you have. We will, obviously any rumor that we're seeing, uh, we will address it in that, uh, in the census 2020census.gov uh, slash rumors. Uh, the data coming into that email address. Yeah, so post census, we will do a whole report on the trust and safety team and, and the information that's happening there. So we will uh, address specifically the data that's coming in uh, to the email address. Um, but for the most part, information coming to the rumors inbox is primarily one way. And so we're asking you to obviously provide as much information. We will use that to reply if we need more information. 
uh, but for the most part, it's a one-way communication so that we can gather as much as we can and then work to address it uh, if need be. Uh, Chris, you're on mute. Uh, whoops. Um, so are there uh, other questions uh, that people have either about how to get involved or if any specific examples of um, something y'all might have seen? Yeah. Um, actually, that is a good question. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the rumors you've seen so far? Yeah, definitely. So we can talk a little bit. There's one that's really perpetuated uh, quite significantly, and there's actually been some great articles on this. There was a rumor circulating about the Department of Home Affairs and that the Department of Home Affairs, there was a, a security alert that came from them warning that there were census workers or that there were fake census workers going around robbing homes. And this actually happened last August. It started last August, really kind of populating in the U.S., uh, we believe we actually know it came over from South Africa is where we first saw this rumor being spread around their census. And somehow the wording and verbiage had changed to address it to the U.S. residents that Census Bureau employees were coming and, and robbing homes. And during last August, we had a large field operation going on called address canvassing. And address canvassing is what we use to verify and make sure we have a complete and accurate address list going into the uh, 2020 census. So one of the biggest things we wanted to make sure is that while we had field workers out there, that the rumor was quickly dispelled that they were not robbing homes. And we actually worked with many local police departments. We found that there are absolutely no police reports of this in the U.S. We wrote a fact check. Uh, we worked with third party fact checkers. They, work, they wrote fact check articles about it and we were able to quickly address that rumor. Uh, there's still some pockets that you'll see spreading online here and there, but some of the comments before we hit that spread was that you know people were saying that their dogs were ready for the census, for the fake census workers that were coming to their house, or they're glad they had their second amendment right to protect their home from you know these fake census workers. So imagine someone coming to their home and being a true census worker. I mean, that really puts our field staff which is obviously our top priority, their safety in danger. So that was something as an example that could have deterred people from answering the door uh, during self-response. So we're very aware of that and certainly keeping a close eye on that. The platforms, I do give them credit, have done great work at simply removing that rumor across their platforms. Facebook has a nice cover that talks about how this has been dispelled as a rumor. Um, some of the other rumors we've heard for my tech audience here, uh, we've heard some rumors that you cannot complete the census online if you have a computer that's older than 2010. That if your computer's you know, over, over 10 years old, you can't complete the census. Uh, some pretty silly rumors like that. Um, we've, heard, uh, we've heard rumors, again, certainly there's some businesses and other organizations that have taken advantage of the census uh, name and timeline and have put mailers out there. And so we're certainly aware that we and we did a great uh, page written to address some of what that looks like to make sure that people have accurate information to know that the census will never ask you for your full social security number. We will never ask you um, for money or donations or anything like that, your credit card information. So we're really doing a hard campaign at fighting um, some of that because even that, while not a rumor, it still causes confusion and that confusion can cause people uh, uh, a lot of a lot of other issues. We've seen commentary about the citizenship question, and just to be very clear, uh, as most probably know, there is not a citizenship question on the 2020 census. And making sure and, and clarifying any rumors out there around the 2020 census having a citizenship question uh, is something we're doing closely. We've seen rumors. Uh, just as my last example, we've certainly seen rumors about the bureau possibly sharing information with other agencies. And I can't stress this enough that that is a that is a rumor under Title 13 of the U.S. Code. No one working for the Census Bureau, including any of our temporary staff, can share anything from the 2020 Census or anything from the Census Bureau for non-statistical purposes with any other agency. So we're really keen on making sure we're dispelling any rumors about who can use Census data and what the Census is using your data for. Um, so those are some of the big ones we're seeing to date. Yeah, I've, I've, I've seen commentary on that, on that too. Um, mm -hmm. Because y'all have to be, not only y'all have to swear an oath, but y'all can get fined if y'all share that information outside right. of 
a penalty for Title 13 is up to five years in prison and $250,000 fine for each uh, instance of violation of Title 13. So it's, it's taken very seriously uh, when it comes to that. Yeah, uh, so we have another question. Uh, can you tell us more about the relationship with big tech companies and access to their backends? Yeah. Um, oh, and this is a reporter from Reveal uh, uh -huh. observing the webinar. Awesome. So certainly uh, there's a lot of great uh, public content that we've put out there around the Census Bureau uh, relationship with big tech. Um, I highly encourage if people are, are interested in this to look at uh, the 2020 Census um, site as certainly um, and some of the other public blogs that Google and Facebook and Twitter and others have put out there. Um, the Bureau's relationship from a back end perspective, uh, Twitter has a what we call what they call a partnership portal that select users of Twitter uh, can actually use to report uh, information directly to their trust and safety team. I'll call it in a more expedited fashion that will quickly be reviewed for violations of their terms of service. Facebook has a very similar platform uh, where the Census Bureau has been granted access to provide uh, reports directly to their team uh, for expedited review. And Nextdoor and others have created the ability for us to directly reach to their teams to quickly address and report information, uh, inaccurate information around the 2020 Census. So those, the ability to do that is something that we take great pride in. Uh, we certainly are thrilled that we have the access to do it. And one of the things that we've worked really hard on is a government agency to do. It's, it's not every day that you know government agency has this ability uh, to build these relationships with big tech and have the, the fight, you know, be really close in fighting uh, mis and disinformation. So hopefully that helps answer that question. Awesome. Um, what other questions do people have? All right. So if there are uh, no more questions, we'll go ahead and wrap up. Um, if you could remind us all one more time, if, you, if we see something fishy on the internet and want to report it in, uh, what's the way to do that? please definitely send an email to rumors at census.gov. Again, it's a great way to make sure that you're reaching out uh, directly to us and uh, definitely the, the fastest way. We have, again, monitoring of that 24-7. Uh, Perfect. Well, thank you. Um, oh, uh, we had one question. Uh, yeah. When people do that, is there a particular template for the email? No, there's no template. We just ask you uh, to give us as much information, screenshots, as much information as possible that will help us, links, uh, pictures, whatever you can, that will help us give us as much information. And we will certainly reach out to you if we have other questions. But I just want to stress one more time that it is generally made, meant to be a one-way communication for us to report in. Um, and do know that everything coming to that mailbox is analyzed by one of our trust and safety analysts. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Um, please participate in the census and hopefully we'll get everyone counted. Yes. Don't forget everyone. You should get a mailer between March 12th to 20th and please go online to respond. We really appreciate it. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Bye everyone.